Welcome back to another episode of PTV. I'm Lake M. And I'm Traylon Gross. It's November, which means it's time to do your duty as a citizen and cast your vote for your favorite candidates. I would have liked to do that, but I'm only 15. It's still a good idea to know the candidates and understand how the political system works. Mr. Fiscus is helping his students do just that, as you'll see in our first story. You know, Republican or Democrat. Republican or Democrat. Senior students have a tough decision to make at this year's election. Helping along the way with this decision is Mr. Fiscus and his government class. I had students start researching the different candidates for the different positions that uh, were on the ballot. For the Democrat, for, and she represents District 110, is Kim Thomas. Um, the best thing that you can do is be an informed voter. So I wanted students who are very new to the uh, election process to be able to um, have some information on each candidate. And also I did some background research on my own to see what governor candidate I would like to choose and what would be most beneficial to me as I go to Korea. Like, so I want to be a teacher. Although the decision making process is difficult, filling out the ballot is simple. The ballot, I chose which governor I wanted, which secretary, which treasurer. And all you did was have to mark it. It was just like any other vote I had to take in high school. Voting is part of your civic responsibility. You know, it's something that's great at the age of 18 that we all get to do. Uh, and so to practice democracy, you know, I encourage everyone to get out, register, and then vote. For PTV, this is Traylon Gross. Not only is November a month of election, but it's also a time to honor those who fought and sacrificed to serve our country. To show appreciation to our local veterans, an annual celebration is held at the fairgrounds. Kylie Russell fills us in on that. The Amendment and Band recently traveled to the 4 H building to perform for our Phillips County veterans. On behalf of the Encore Living Phillips County, uh, I welcome you to this celebration of Veterans Day. So we started this about three years ago, and this is put on by a group here in Phillipsburg, and Harlan Nonhoff is one of the people that's in charge of that, and he got a hold of us three years ago and asked if we would do it, and it was very, very successful, and so, and they chose November the 9th for our day. Um, they're starting it as an annual thing, so this will be the third year we've helped with it, and the third year they've had it. Creating a successful program takes time and preparation. Oh, maybe two months ago, we just mix it in with when we was getting ready for football games and things like this, and most of the music Music we most of them know before the freshmen or the new people are the ones that have to uh, spend a little more time getting the music learned. We worked starting in the summer we start picking out what our patriotic pieces will be and some that are really big hits we like to do every single year. Not only do the veterans enjoy the event but the performers also enjoy showing their appreciation. My favorite part is probably playing the first song because the first song is one of my favorites because at the end it has the off the show Popeye, it has some of the Popeye music on it and I like that show so. I like how it means a lot to these people and which it makes me feel good that it means a lot to them because it means a lot to me. So seeing the appreciation that they give us is amazing and I'm so glad that we get the chance to make their lives or make them a little bit happier. My favorite thing about the veterans program is getting the chance to thank our veterans. Um, it's really cool to see those people and to see how much this particular music means to them and it really generates a lot of pride and patriotism in us as well. For PTV, this is Kylie Russell. Okay, so November has elections and Veterans Day, but do you know what I look forward to most about November? I'm guessing you're talking about Thanksgiving. Oh yeah, and you know what my favorite part of Thanksgiving dinner is? What's that? Pie for dessert. Yes, I do enjoy pie as well. In our next story, we'll find out that making and sharing pies is about much more than eating a tasty treat. Take a look. Mrs. Wisar's class found a new way to make learning as easy as pie. This project started about a couple of weeks ago when my daughter, who teaches early childhood special education, contacted me with the video from a blog that she follows for kindergarten about how kids learned about graphing 
by tasting pies, deciding which one was their favorite, and then the class graphed the favorites so that they could see what the friends liked and what they liked. In addition to teaching others, students are also learning how to make pies. We made pumpkin pie in my group. Our group made a French silk chocolate pie. Sometimes, making mistakes is the best way to learn. A complication with the French soap pie was the chocolate pudding filling that went into it. It was pudding from scratch and not pudding out of a box. The hard part was it wasn't very like thick, so it was really runny and it's kind of hard to get in the oven without spilling it. Not only can these skills be used in the classroom, but they can also be used for special events. Making pies to take to Miss Wise's class at the elementary school is a good skill that we should all have for holiday times to know how to make pie. It's good because we can learn how to make pies so we can make them for like family gatherings and then we can get involved with the community. For one PHS graduate, baking pies takes on a new meaning. I first started baking probably when I was really little. It's always just been like a family tradition. So as long as I can remember, I've been in the kitchen helping my mom and my sister and my grandma. So I'm a member of Student Foundation at Kansas State University, which is an organization that works to promote philanthropy and also raise money for students in financial distress on campus. So a couple weeks ago, we had our Why I Give Week event, which basically just teaches students about the importance of philanthropy and how they can give back using their own time and talents. So we handed out pumpkin pie on that Friday, and the day was called Pie I Give. So students could write a thank you note to a faculty member or donor, and then in exchange, they would get a piece of pumpkin pie. So we had a lot of traffic that day at the table because people wanted to stop by and get a treat. Um, so last year, I started volunteering at Cat's Cupboard, which is K-State's on-campus food pantry. Last September was the first time it opened. So I volunteered about a couple hours every week all of last year, and then this year I was asked to be an undergraduate employee. I still wanted to give back, um, and so that's why I'm making pies and then donating all the proceeds um, to help raise money because everything on the shelves here at the food pantry is donated or bought with donated money. So it's really important that we have the funds necessary in order to keep students fed um, and have enough food to concentrate in class and be able to function. For PTV, this is Zoe Dinkle. Which president made Thanksgiving a holiday? I have no clue. Not one single president? There is one, but I can't. I don't know the one. Let's hear it. Just, just throw one out there. George Washington. That's incorrect. Abraham Lincoln in, in 1863. All right, Connor, what does your family uh, have any traditions or anything that you guys do on Thanksgiving? Yeah, we go out to Grandma's and eat some food and sleep after we eat food, so yeah. What's your favorite food that you guys have? Stuffing. It's the best food ever. Dude, what are you doing? If I'm going to enjoy all that pie at Thanksgiving, I'd better get in shape. Good idea. But did you know that you could also get paid for getting in shape? Sounds great. How do I sign up for that? Find out in our next story. Want to get in shape and earn money while doing it? Download Sweatcoin. Sweatcoin is an app and it tracks your steps and gives you money for it. I've made about 300 Sweatcoin. Sweatcoin, you get one per every thousand steps. The virtual money earned on the app can be used to buy gift cards or products sponsored by the app. I bought a $50 Amazon gift card. I bought a uh, bracelet thing for 50 sweat coin. Things you can get on the app are iPhones, accessories, clothes, and gift cards. For PTV, this is Nathaniel Huntley. Happy Thanksgiving, and welcome to my sibling food challenge. Today we have the Babcock sisters. I'd like to ask you guys, how is Thanksgiving dinner at the Babcock household? Well, we usually go to one of our grandmas, either the Babcock side or the Lydic side, and we all share food and just have a good time. Would you both say you have really good manners? No. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, we're going to start with wine tasting, and you can lift up your bowls to see what the challenge is. One, two, three. No. <laughs> Okay. Okay. All right. Put them in your mouth 
and you have to try to drink your whole glass of cranberry juice. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> Wait, how do you do it? I don't know. Oh, like this. <laughs> Okay. Can we just go? I can't. Yeah, you got it. Okay, ready? <laughs> <laughs> okay, ready? <laughs> <laughs> I can't. <laughs> How was that cranberry juice? Good. Is that how you drink your juice at grandma's house? No. <laughs> All right, let's try our next challenge, cranberry fluff. Dig in. <laughs> Not bad. All of those guns. I knew this Russia is really good. <laughs> there is one more traditional November event that takes place at PHS. You mean extra long football seasons? Well, that too, but we'll save that for a sports report. I'm talking about the school play. Here's a recap of that. Dating, where did it all begin? From the caveman era to beyond the nifty 50s, dating continues to create challenges as shown in this year's school play. The play in general was about the history of dating, so it was a comedy looking at how it's just hard to get a date no matter what time period you live in. Um, the cheesy pickup lines. Roses are red, Greek columns are mighty. My name's Adonis, is yours Aphrodite? <laughs> really? How people try too hard sometimes, and if they're just themselves, they actually have better luck at things. The message this play is sending is that the overall theme of dating has not changed, but we've used many methods throughout time to display our affection towards each other, and some of it is a little silly and weird. The small cast of 16 members took on the large task of portraying 86 characters. I played the caveman, Olmec man, fellow number two, 80s man, and villain. I played a Roman woman, a Greek woman, a Puritan woman, a medieval woman, Sadie Hawkins, and Bestie. I play the caveman, Cupid, a colonial man, and a greaser. Go a long way back to me. Cast members learn that sometimes not everything goes as planned. Um, well, there was one part where I had to change and come right back out right away and there was a slight hesitation and my dress got stuck in my pants and it was awkward but it's okay. We had a rehearsal and I had come out as a greaser. Um, I was told to give Jacob a more slight push um, during the scene and so I went up and <laughs> shoved him a little bit too hard and he fell on his butt and I sort of just sat there and tried not to laugh and the whole time everyone on stage is laughing while I'm trying to deliver lines. Despite a few minor mishaps, the play was a success. In general, it, it went really well. Um, as usual, the dress rehearsals leading up to it, I was going, this isn't going to happen. It's just not going to happen. But they always tend to surprise me. Even though it's my second year, I've, I've worked with plays at my other high school and it's the same 
the same thing every time. You just sit there and hope for the best and then from somewhere they pull it all out and, and they get the laughs. And the right laughs too, so that's a plus. <laughs> I think overall this is probably the best out of all the practices and rehearsals we have. This is probably one of our top performances, probably the two nights. For PTV, this is Abby McCartney. Alright, we're here with Sharon Ellis and Sierra Portner with some Thanksgiving trivia. Alright, Sharon, what was the name of the ship that transported the pilgrims to America? The Mayflower. That's correct. Sierra, how many turkeys do you think are cooked for Thanksgiving each year? 20,000. 46 million. You're not, not too close there. Alright, we'll go back to you. What are turkey chicks called? I have no idea. Not chicks, but they're pults. Alright, which president made Thanksgiving a national holiday? Jefferson. <laughs> Adams. Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> Alright, Sierra, what's your favorite thing about Thanksgiving? Uh, spending time with friends and family. What about you? I'm going to say the food. What's your favorite food? Cheesecake. Alright. What are you most thankful for, Sierra? I am most thankful for... Jesus. <laughs> friends and family. Alright, and now both of you together, I'm going to ask you to make a turkey call. Uh, <laughs> call, call. Like the, the little gobble gobble. <laughs> <laughs> Do that again. Here is your first food. <laughs> this is so disgusting. I'm gonna go hurry a guy. No. I can't even see something down. Yeah, you're doing great. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> now let's go to our sports report with my dogs, Trey and John. Hey Panther fans, welcome to our sports update. I'm Trey Sides. And I'm John Hunnicutt. While most schools have packed up their football equipment for the year and have rolled out wrestling mats and basketball carts, our fellows are keeping the dream alive of a football state championship. In order to do that, we had to face off against a tough Hoisington team in the sub-state championship game. Here's a recap of that game. The Panthers took the field ready to repeat a previous victory they earned over the Cardinals of Hoisington, but this game would prove to be tougher than before. This game was different because they came out more ready to play than they did the first time. We weren't able to get the turnovers we had the first game, and then it kind of turned into a dogfight there for a while. Uh, yeah, they definitely came out and hit a lot harder this, this game. Uh, they're, they're way more ready for us. The first quarter was a battle with neither team finding an answer of how to get points on the board. 
But in the second quarter, it would be the Cardinals who found the end zone first with this quarterback keeper. The deficit didn't seem to phase the Panthers. I think last week really helped uh, being down with Conway. Uh, we just knew if we'd stick together and continue to compete, uh, we we're going to have a good shot at winning this. Uh, we know we can score uh, in a hurry, so yeah, that seven points uh, turned into seven to seven real quick. Just three plays later, Phillipsburg tied it up when senior Nathan Moon gets loose. We were running uh, a trap about midfield, and it turned out to be me one-on-one -on -one against the safety, just lowered my shoulder and was able to get past him, and then ran for the rest of the way. The Panthers seemed to come up with big plays when they needed it. We were able to block one of their punts and give us the ball down at like the 15 yard line, which gave us a really good opportunity to score. Panthers go on to take the lead with this 27 yard field goal by Hunnicutt. <laughs> Hoisington then puts together a drive that puts them on the Panther 17 yard line. On fourth down, Traylon Gross breaks through the line and sacks the quarterback, giving the Panthers possession. Phillipsburg then creates a little breathing room when the side to sides connection finds the end zone for another touchdown, making the halftime score 17-7. to Ty uh, just ran a fade, uh, made a great play on the ball, just threw it up. He was one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. Lyman protected it well and uh, gave enough time to get it, get it to Ty. In the second half, the Cardinals tighten the game with their first possession as they inch their way down the field and push into the end zone, making the score 17 to 14. But after that, the Panthers stayed in control. We were a little more assignment sound after the first half, knowing what exactly they were going to do, and we were able to stop their main ball carrier, number 33. To extend the lead, side scrambles and finds Traylon Gross, who runs for another touchdown. Trey Lenz, it was supposed to go more towards Nate's side, uh, but defense played it really well, so I just had to make a play. I got out of the pocket and found Trey Lenz. He was open and he was uh, ran, ran to the end zone, so it was a nice place. In the fourth quarter, the Panthers put the feather in the cap with another touchdown run by Gross, making the final score 31 to 14. Earning a trip to the state championship means a lot to this team. It means everything to us because uh, we've been playing football forever and it's just, just fun to be back at state because we've been at state since little kids and it's fun. Uh, it's huge. <laughs> uh, Shelton had a, had a goal at the uh, beginning of the season, 12-0 or 13-0, uh, going undefeated. So uh, that's just another step. And uh, next week, we got to come ready. I think it's Riley County, so uh, definitely prepare for them next week and be ready to go next Saturday. For PTV, this is Kay Pockabeer. Although our football season is extended, for the girls and guys not out for football, the basketball season has begun. Lake M gives us a preview of our basketball teams. Yep, it's that time of the year again. Who's ready for a little basketball? So I have two senior managers. Uh, we'll start with them because they're really important to our, our daily aspects. Um, Nicole Huntley and uh, Nyla Salinas, they kind of just keep everything flowing on the sidelines. and. And then uh, on the court, um, we have Alexi Beach, um, Ashley Babcock, uh, Maya McDonald, Ashlyn Kennedy, and Kylie Russell's back from injury last year. And um, collectively, those five are um, a, a, a great group of girls as far as um, great leadership. Um, they bring energy. Um, they give a lot of effort when they're on the floor. And uh, they just, they're just good kids um, leading the way. And uh, I'm really hoping for a lot of great things from them this year. Not only is there a lot of seniors, but they all have experience and are ready to help the team. Our team strengths are probably just the, the amount of experience and, uh, and leadership coming back. Uh, you know, we only losing one senior last year. Uh, these girls were able to get a lot of time on the floor and, uh, and get comfortable playing together, so they built some, some continuity and some chemistry. And um, so uh, strengths-wise, I think we're going to play as a unit uh, really well. And I think um, defensively, we got a lot better this summer, um, and offensively too. So I think just both sides of the ball, we improved uh, since last year. The boys team may be getting a slow start, but that hasn't stopped three boys from the grind. Well, basketball practice, uh, since football's still going on, we only have three guys uh, that's not out for football. Uh, we're running a little bit and shooting a little bit. It's just hard to, to get started, but uh, it's a good thing. Uh, the football uh, team's having a great year, and hopefully it continues. For PTV, this is Lake M. 
Our wrestling season is getting underway as well, despite several guys still playing football. Let's take a look at what to expect from this year's team. All right, here we go. One, two, three. Although most are still grappling it out on the football field, some wrestlers are ready to hit the mats. We have Jacob Sisson, returning state champ, Aaron Linker, uh, fourth place finish last year. We have Matt Kirkendall back from Logan to finish up his senior year. He's had some varsity experience. Ryland Hayes is back. He wrestled varsity. Though the new season may be exciting, it isn't all just fun and games for the boys. You know, one of our biggest rivals, we see them in a duel. It's always Norton, hands down. Smith Center and Norton. Those are our biggest rivals. Norton, Norton duel, that's the goal. The team has high hopes for the season. My team goal is to be the top two in the league, um, place in the top ten at state, be one of the top three teams at regionals. Um, that positive record is, my, is one of my main goals and hoping to place in every tournament I go to also. For PTV, this is Annie Wizar. Go Panthers! This Friday at 7 p.m., come show your support for the Panthers at a community pep rally held in the Newland Gym to support our team as we try to bring home a championship trophy. Then on Saturday, head to the Salina District Stadium for the 1 p.m. kickoff of the big game. Time's up for this sports update. I'm John Honecutt. And I'm Trey Sides. Go, Go Panthers! Panthers. All right, Joel, what are you most thankful for? My family. Family. You guys have any uh, plans for uh, Thanksgiving? Go to state football. Stay home. All right, one more question. Which Thursday of November is Thanksgiving? The fourth. The third. The fourth, well done. All right. I need your best impersonation of a turkey. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Gobble, gobble. Gobble, gobble. Here is your first food. You have to eat both of these deviled eggs. I have to eat it all. I have to laugh. I really have to focus. Does it cold? Okay. The PTV staff would like to wish all of you a happy Thanksgiving. I'm Lake M. And I'm Traylon Gross. Stay classy, Phillipsburg High. High.